Oh. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's really, really a great pleasure to be here with you today. And it's, uh, of course, it's really nice to see how the hard work of a year, year and a half really culminates in this, uh, in this, in this beautiful event. And, of course, the white paper took uh, quite a few different directions and turns, but for, for today, let me talk something about something which is closer to, to my heart about uh, sustainability and can, how can we uh, achieve it with the blockchain solutions, but, but also with the uh, advanced materials. So, and when we talk about su sustainability, of course, we mainly probably think about, about energy. So I will talk about other aspects of sustainability a little bit, a little bit later, but energy is still the dominant factor there. And um, of course, we use quite a few, quite a number of different energy sources. To my taste, not enough. The problem is that the fraction of the, of the renewable, that, that, that green corner, that, that green slice, is not large enough. And the task for us, the task for the whole humanity, really, for the next few years is how to increase this, this slice in the next few, few years, how to, pay, how to make this wall diagram green. I'm sure that there are many people in the audience now immediately think, come on, are you an idiot? You use PowerPoint. Just simply go and, 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 and just paint it green, right? It's unfortunately, it's not, it's not that simple because the energy landscape is by far, far, far more, more complex. It doesn't depend only how we, how we, where, where do we source the energy. It's how do we transport it, how do we, con uh, uh, how do we uh, just change it from one, from, from one type to another, how do we store it, how do, do, we, do, do we utilize it. You try to pull one stream in this, in this diagram, and the whole diagram needs to, be, needs to be changed. So now you can imagine how difficult and, and, and how uh, mammoth task is it to change entirely the entire ecosystem, the entire energy ecosystem from the non-sustainable into, into sustainable. And as, as Sunny said, the biggest problem here is is to find the driving factor for this transformation. How do we convince people? How do we convince industries? How do we convince companies that we need to transform into this new reality of, of, of being, being sustainable? So um, we can talk separately. It's really a long conversation about sustainability. The level below is uh, net, net zero emissions, so different People, different country, understand different things in the, in this, and there are many, many different models. How how, how can we go sustainable uh, in the future? So uh, Europe is uh, is focusing on electric slash slash hydrogen model, which is which which might work, and probably Europe doesn't have much my, uh, any other choice. Then. Uh, for U.S., maybe another model is better. So hydrogen slash, uh, slash carbon, it's, uh, it's, it's probably even more feasible and would require even less investment. In fact, we can go really, really wild. We can just go with forestry. Just we can keep everything as it is and simply plant uh, one Nevada large forest every, uh, every year, and then, uh, and then we, we would probably achieve the net zero emissions. So we just need another trillion tons of, 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 of CO2 to be, to be extracted. But the problem is, whichever scenario you take, they all require uh, huge investments. We still don't know which one is going to win. Uh, I'm sure that the one which is most convenient, the most uh, eco-friendly, the most uh, with the largest infrastructure to, to, to give you uh, the, the uh, largest access to, to the renewable energy, but the, the investments into sustainability would be, would be huge, and unfortunately, it has to be made, and it has to be made now. So 
that's that's not not news, of course. Uh, every every single uh, every single industry requires investment, and every single industry starts with uh, with investment. The only difference is that the energy industry, same as as uh, as uh, many other, they would con convert this investment into energy, of course, but also but also profit. So generally, all the industries are optimized for. For, for profit, and it's, so that's the, that's the basics of, of capitalism. People are fundamentally greedy, so then if you, if you promise them higher return, you promise them higher profit, they would, they, would, they would invest there. Our task now, and that's where really the, uh, the uh, I think WeChain can really help and can, can really drive the way, is to completely change this picture and create a way how to, how to uh, optimize investment, not, for, all, not for, for, for profit, but for sustainability. It doesn't mean that it cannot be profitable. It will be profitable as well, but still the prime goal now has to be, uh, has to be sustainability. And uh, in, in order to do this, you really need to, to, to gather efforts, not only from industries, but, but from pretty much every single individual as well. And unfortunately, the current, the, the, the current structure of the energy market doesn't really help. So we have the centralized production and, uh, and supply of, 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 of energy, which has quite a few positive things. It's robust, it's easy to, to regulate. The problem is it's really, um, supply driven so it doesn't give any customer a, a choice so uh, we, it's not it's not it's not flexible so it's really very difficult to find those triggers those mechanisms which would uh, which would help to optimize it for uh, for sustainability so it's very very resistive to the sustainability switch instead what we would really need to create is a a distributed, a distributed market of, uh, of sustainable energy production. And, uh, and uh, it's a market where everyone, every single one of us, is not only a consumer, but also a producer of, of, of the energy. So we already do this. So we have solar panels on our, on our roofs. In, in some countries, you can sell, sell electricity back into the grid. In some countries, you can sell even natural gas back back uh, into the grid. So we already start to create this 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 complex this complex network. The problem is, is there are no mechanisms how to uh, how to regulate it. And I think blockchain solutions and those which are created by WeChain as well, they they can be the way how to regulate this extremely 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 complex market. So we really need to, um, to, to create those, those mechanisms of the automatic accounting of the, of, of the green energy produced and, uh, and, and the way to sell it on the market and the, and the way to, to consume it on the market. And then there are a few other maybe smaller things which, which, come, uh, which come further that we have to figure out how to regulate the actual grids, either natural gas grids, if we're still going to use it, or electric grid or hydrogen, hydrogen grid. And uh, with, even with the current complexity, it's already, it's already quite hard. You, 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 you can see that across the globe, more and more blackouts start to, start to appear. It's because the, those regulations are not, are, not, are not working well enough. So we would need, and it, it's already exists, some AI solution for the, for the regulations of those, of those complex grids. But also, we really need a lot of smart horizontal contracts, so which don't really include those, those big, uh, big uh, energy producers. So which really can do it not only business to business, but also business, but people to people as well. So just uh, some time ago, just a few, few weeks ago, really, the Tesla uh, announced their Tesla master plan to become fully, fully to create fully sustainable URs which is uh, not, not that much different, honestly, if, if I read it, uh, than, than the, the white paper, paper which, which, uh, which, which we announced. But I think that we, can, we have ideas which can go even, 
even further. We really have this, um, this ideology that every one of us is not only a consumer of energy, but also, but also a producer. Even, even if you take a, a simple Tesla, there are so many ways how you can optimize your, 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 your own car and be, be rewarded for that. So the important part here is that we need to include into those complex contracts the reward for being, for being sustainable. So you, 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 you start to utilize better batteries, you get rewarded, you get a hybrid engine with the, with the hydrogen storage, you extract energy from the, uh, from the hot engine through thermoelectrics, you extract energy from the vibrations or from the, or, or you can even maybe convert CO2 emission by coating your car with some, with some, with some catalysts. And so there are so many ways how you can, how, how you can c contribute on a personal level and blockchain solutions allow you to capture those, those efforts and get rewards for, for sustainability. It's actually even, even on, on a personal level. So uh, every time you work, so every one of us, we, we, over the day, we generate enough energy to easily charge our, our mobile phone. So you just you, you, you get it from, uh, from the thermoelectric, you emit enough, enough power from the, from the vibrations again, from the, from the impact. You go on the rain, so into the rain, so you can, you can create clothes which, which generate enough power. So we can actually, we can do this. We can get much more sustainable on the personal level. And if it is captured properly, it can be, it, it can, it can be turned, turned into, into a reward. Now, <clears throat> I should say, so this, this now uh, has to be really captured by the blockchain solutions, but we also need to, 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 to create a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, opportunities, technical opportunities, uh, how to how to do it, and in that sense, intelligent materials we are working on. So uh, is is really one of the key one of the key aspects for uh, to to become fully fully sustainable. So let me now just switch topic a little bit, and before I, I tell you exactly the. Some of the solutions, so we have a number of those solutions, some of the solutions which we have with the intelligent materials for sustainability. Let me tell you uh, just a story. So why, why materials are, are, are important? Well, actually, uh, somehow we, uh, we really uh, put a lot of pressure on, on the dominant Materials of the of the uh, of the of, of our time. We even call the ages we live in by the by the name of, of materials. Right? There is there was a stone age. There was the, the the bronze age. There was the the iron age. It would be really a good a good question to ask. So which age do uh, do we live in now? And um, probably for the first time in history uh, we we actually have a choice because we can call our time the, the silicon age or, or the digital age or the nuclear age. So there are really many different opportunities. But maybe rather than having a choice, maybe we should really think about it and uh, for the first time not, not to make a choice because and really keep it open and maybe we don't need to, to really to focus on one one dominant material. So we're now switching from the, uh, from the standardized production to custom manufacturing. So you can draw something in the comfort of your, of your office, send this drawing by email so they can 3D print it for you uh, the next day. Maybe we can do this, we can do this with, with materials as well, and that would open many more opportunities also in, in sustainability. So why do I say so? Let me just give you, give you one example. So here is the periodic table of, of, of elements uh, which have been used in, the, um, uh, uh, in silicon technology prior to, prior to 1990. So very simple uh, technology, what, six elements, right? So silicon, uh, boron phosphorus for, for doping, aluminum for interconnects, so hydrogen, oxygen for Passivation, very, very simple. I mean, even I could probably do it. Now. So 
After 1990, the transistors became smaller, so we needed uh, to transfer more current pure, pure unit area, so we have to get into more conductive material. We started to use copper rather than aluminum, so if you use copper, you have to put some uh, diffusion barriers, some work, work function matching materials, but still manageable technology. But then we, we kept betting on silicon, we bet on silicon, and now these days, so we use half of the periodic table in our silicon technology. Something which started as a beautiful, very simple, very, very straightforward approach, these days is a very, very complex, very complicated enterprise, and really the complexity, uh, 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 sometimes it feels that the complexity uh, outweighs the, the, the possible benefits. And uh, just, so, and the reason is that we basically bet on one material on silicon a long time ago, what, 50, 70 years ago, and we kept betting on, on, on one material and we kept adapting the, the technology. Maybe at some moment we should have switched to a new material and well, we, we, will, we will probably do. Now, if I show you how many elements is there in your body, you would see that we actually use many more elements in our silicon technology than there are uh, uh, elements in our, in, in our own body. And of course, you would agree that uh, people, human, can, can do many more versatile tasks than, than, than our computers. And that's actually generally the case. If you think about it, we only bet on, uh, on, on a few materials. So, uh, as I said, electronics, our electronics is all silicon. Our, uh, con our construction engineering is really based on, on, on the strengths of steel, and that's it. So our aerospace engineering is mainly aluminum, now we start to use a little bit of the, of the, um, uh, of the carbon. And uh, few materials means only few, up, few opportunities. We really, so if uh, an electronic engineer needs to create a new, a new device, so he or she needs to check, okay, what silicon can do for me? What's the band gap? What's the work function? What's the band gap of silicon oxide? And then they can, they, they, they just design something within those those constraints. Now, if you if you really um, ideally you don't want to be constrained, of course, you really want to think to, to think wildly. So and then, okay, I want to generate energy from the from the slide uh, just shining on my on my clothes. Can I can I use this this energy to to charge my phone? So which which material, which 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 kind of textile do I use do I use for this. And uh, we start to use those uh, new materials. We usually combine different materials to uh, achieve new properties. It's called the um, composite materials or heterostructures. And uh, there, are, there are some examples there, but still it's few and far between. Really, ideally, you would, you would really want to create a material from scratch, really just uh, design it in the way you want, and really then create, if not atom by atom, but at least layer, layer by layer engineering, and then you can really assign certain functionalities to, uh, to, to uh, different layers. And that's, um, sorry, I, I will, there will be a couple of minutes on, on, on the graphene, but that's, that's where graphene comes quite, quite handily into play, because it's, it's, only one, it's only one layer of, of, of carbon atoms, and it's really, uh, it's, it's really convenient to use it as one of the building blocks for, uh, for, for, uh, for those materials. But let me actually, it, it's quite a, a convenient way to make one of the points about, about, about sustainability, because long, long, long time ago, when we started to work with with graphene, so, so these days it's, quite, it's used quite widely in many, many different applications. But long time ago, we, we, when we started to use graphene, so graphene is one atom thick material, the thinnest possible 
material only uh, and, and, and it, it consists only of, of carbon atoms. So we used scotch tape and, and graphite with the material which you find in your pencil and just simply exfoliated it and, and got into the, into the monolayer. These days, there are many other ways how to, how to produce it depending on the price you want to pay and the quality you want to achieve. And one of the way is the, is the so-called chemical vapor deposition when you have a, a hot catalyst and you run carbon-containing gas on top of it and then this, this, when those uh, molecules feel the presence of the catalyst, they crack into carbon and hydrogen. So hydrogen fly away, you can take take the, uh, the hydrogen over and then carbon rearranges into, in, uh, into graphene. So this is quite a popular way how to produce it. Many, many square kilometers uh, is produced every, uh, every day. But um, it actually has some, some, some consequences as well. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with those flares which you can see on top of many refineries across the, across the, the globe. So our, uh, many of, of, our, um, of our processes are not efficient enough and we, we, we simply throw away this, this waste, waste gas, it's basically methane, and you, and you have to burn it because methane is actually even, even worse, uh, uh, even worse uh, greenhouse gas than, 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 than CO2. It's, it's better to, to emit CO2 rather than, rather than methane. So, and that's, so those flares, they have every, uh, everything which we need to produce graphene. So we have, that they have methane, they have heat, so we, and, and that's what we do. We create those reactors which you simply put on top of those, of those, of those flares and you, can, and you can immediately convert the methane into hydrogen and, uh, and graphene and create added value and, and, and then register using those, those blockchain technology the, uh, uh, on, the, on the carbon credit market. So it really, so just once you combine those technologies to, together, you really start to get additional profit. So you, you get, you, you, you stop emitting the, uh, the greenhouse gas, you get, you, you get hydrogen, you get graphene, and you register your carbon credits at the same time. So, and then there are many other ways how to, how to produce those, those, those materials, but then the, the beauty of this, of this is that there are many other pencils, of course, in the world, and I, I said that we, we, we produce graphene from lead pencils. We actually produce, can produce many other two-dimensional crystals, only one atom thick crystals in, uh, from, from, from other pencils. And now we have, and now we have this, um, this, this opportunity when we, 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 we produce one atom thick fabrics and we can just start combining those, those, those materials to, to, together, but in a manner uh, Mother Nature never intended it to be. And then we start making those devices which we could never, could never make before, including very, uh, very high efficiently uh, solar panels, we can, we can make transistors, we can make uh, light emitting devices here, so we can, we, we can really make, make uh, uh, quite a few things. So, uh, I just, one last slide about physics and then, and then we move on to the, back to the, to the sustainability because it's something close to, to my heart. You really, with those, when we start, when you have a chance to put, to combine, to create new materials and new devices and new structures, really with the, with the uh, atom by atom or layer by layer engineering, you really get a lot of opportunities. So even how you, you, you assemble those, those, those crystals together, uh, it matters. So when you rotate them, you create this, uh, this, uh, the, those beautiful patterns. They they are called Moira patterns, and and and, and those Moira patterns apparently uh, create create new uh, new um, uh, new properties for your uh, 
for your materials. And so this is really one of the uh, new direction in the, in, in the field of, uh, of electronics and, uh, uh, and material science, the, the so-called twistronics, when you control the properties of your, of your materials by slightly, by tiny, tiny rotations of the, of the, of the, two, uh, of the two neighboring layers. And it, it, there was uh, a few years ago the breakthrough from MIT, from, from Pablo Group, who discovered superconductivity, and then we found ferromagnetism in the same crystal. So it really works. It, it really works quite well. So we are quite well on the on the way to create novel materials with novel properties for for many different energy applications. But now let me <clears throat> make the next step and. Let's, let's just uh, a little bit, let's dream a little bit. So if you would be given just any opportunity in the world you want, what kind of, what kind of materials would you like to, to create? So I'm not going to ask to just, uh, as my students, just you and you and you to tell me the, the answer. Let, let me give you the answer, and not, and not even my answer, is, is the answer from the... Uh, from the um, directors of this movie, I hope some people recognize the movie, right? Terminator 2, right? So it's uh, for, those, for, for those who don't, who don't know, the, so the plot is that the robot from 2029 was sent back to 1991, so the, 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 the movie was, was shot in 1991 uh, to kill Sarah Connor and, uh, and her son, right? And the only reason I'm showing it to you is to show how people in 1991 dreamt about robots in the future. So it should be made from liquid metal, changing shape, changing color, would be able to, 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 to self-heal, self-adapt, uh, uh, and so on. So now we are in 2023. And I have a little bit of, of a bad news that unless we really, really work hard, we don't have any chance to fulfill the dreams of those, of those people who, who shot Terminator. And it's not, it's not only about our robotics. No, it's actually generally our, our, our technologies are completely wrong. So we have, we have the so-called top-down technology and top-down functionality. So individual components, individual pieces are not functional in their, uh, in their own right. They start to be functional only when assembled into quite a complex system, like a, like a clock, like, a, uh, like uh, 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 an integrated circuit, like a robot. But individual components are not are not are not functional, and that's and that and that really creates a, a problem because you really uh, so if uh, so if it's if it's not very sustainable. If one piece breaks, that's it. The, the whole system collapses immediately. Now, if you think about it, uh, biological systems like our cells. In, in, in biological systems, the functionalities are distributed across all different channels, or all the, all the different scales. So individual proteins are functional, individual membranes of, of the cells are functional, individual cells are, are functional in their own right. You don't think that, okay, the protein in my finger need to unfold, get, the, get oxygen or transfer, uh, transfer uh, electron from this molecule to another, then fold back, and then, uh, and then get stored. It is done on the level of the, of the molecule itself. And unfortunately, if you would have to design something like this uh, in, terms of, in terms of our modern electronics, you would have to program all those, all those, all those processes. So <clears throat> basically what we want is to create materials which can uh, function in their own rights and, 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 can, and would be able to extract the, and just do, do some uh, smart functionality, for example, extract energy from the ambient uh, and so on, on their own, rather than uh, not, not when they are assembled into, into uh, a, large, a large system. 
So really create, start to work on the, those functional intelligent materials. So functional means that they can be programmable to perform certain, uh, certain tasks and intelligent. At the very least, they would need to have memory to be able to learn and, and, and adapt to the external environment. Just let me give you one example. So one of the applications of, 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 of uh, graphene is membranes for uh, desalination. So in countries like Israel or Singapore, uh, most of the water, actually all the, pretty much all the water is coming from, the, uh, from desalination plants and, and it's, usually, it's usually membranes. You simply press, uh, just press the water through this, through this uh, membrane salt, just uh, you, you keep the salt out and the fresh, and the, and the fresh water goes go through. But same as the energy landscape, the water supply uh, uh, systems are very, are very complex in their, uh, in their own rights because, of course, uh, you have to control the quality of the water. So after this membrane, you put a sensor that, which uh, senses the presence of the toxic elements maybe in the, in the water. So then, uh, you, so the sensor sends the, this, uh, this, um, uh, this information to the computer, and then the computer analyzes it, sends uh, the message to the, to the actuator, which opens or, or closes the valve and so on. But imagine if we can do this uh, in, the, uh, in the membrane itself, so that if, if our membrane is intelligent enough to sense the presence of those toxic elements, and if, there are, if, there is, if they're present, just change their conformation and, and, and basically close, close, close by itself. So now our material itself uh, fulfills the function of the membrane, of the sensor, of the computer, of the, of, the, of, the, of the actuator. And that makes it much more efficient, much more sustainable. You don't need to use the complex um, system, the, the computers waste energy and so on. You actually, it actually works on the, on, on the material level, like uh, the biological systems in our, in our body. And by the way, I think this is really one, one of the way where, where we should um, think Think next because uh, water, water supply is probably the next big thing after we, we, we solve. Actually, or we, maybe maybe we need to solve it before we saw we, we sort out the the energy supply. And there are many good technologies these days that there is absolutely no reason for for it to be a shortage of water anywhere in the world. With, with enough energy, there are, enough, there are good enough technologies which, which can supply you water. And again, if it is properly managed and, and, uh, and, and with, the, with the proof of work and, and with, the, with the proof of, of production, I think it can be made not only sustainable but also, but also profitable. Okay, so now uh, just uh, unfortunately, uh, we know roughly how we can, we, we, should, we can make those intelligent materials, so there are some basic rules that it needs to be done from the, uh, the, the components need to interact strongly, and there should be multiple interactions between components, and then you create the so-called the degenerate energy landscape, which actually, which, uh, uh, which works in a similar matter like the, the proteins in your, uh, uh, in your body. And so, so when, so proteins, they're so versatile because they can exist in many different conformations. So they can, they, they can uh, fold and unfold into different states and the different states mean different functions. And then they, they perform the, this function falls back and then, and then, and then get, get stored until better time. So that's, that's exactly what we try to do uh, with our material. So there would be, uh, they would have those smart functions in, uh, in order, to, in order to, uh, to be used for a variety of, of, of energy applications. And um, so we work really now with a, a lot of different, different materials. We, we don't limit ourselves to graphene alone. So there are really many, many, it's usually low dimensional materials like quantum dots or poly polymers, polyelectrolytes, even some, some life materials. And we assemble them into those complex, uh, complex heterostructures and, uh, and then 
uh, upon, and we program them that upon certain stimuli, they produce some response, but also would change their own structure uh, and, and have some, 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 memory, some memory effect, effect in it. So um, uh, maybe just uh, say that unfortunately physics doesn't give us good uh, good guidance here because we basically trying to create life materials starting from non-living components and physics doesn't give you answers how to how to um, uh, how to create life right so we all know how to make life people intuitively but if you are asked to 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 explain how to do it it's very very difficult so we, we, we use a lot of uh, artificial intelligence, dynamic artificial intelligence, time variant uh, artificial intelligence to design those materials. And of course, we have to create a lot of robotics labs to, uh, to, to, to gain enough, uh, enough, uh, in, enough data. So when we talk about robotics lab, of course, many people think about those robots with the hands and, and then just, and just putting, putting um, uh, just start doing experiments in the, in the lab to, together. So we have those, but that's, that's really more for, for uh, fun for, for, the, for, for uh, students to, to have a, a bit of fun. In reality, those, those robots are much, more, are much more specialized. So for a particular robot, if you want to create more efficient solar cell, you really just, just, just have a robot which only produces solar cells and just and, and, and just mixes different elements test uh, test the, uh, the performance of, of the cell mix a new one test the, uh, the performance sends the, the the data into our into our uh, AI uh, AI system and just uh, and just uh, keep doing it keep doing it repeatedly but then the the if you do it if you do it right you really can can create life material and you can create some materials with very interesting properties. So let, just let me give you a couple of examples. So here is the material which we program to be, to have the, the, the uh, self-healing self properties. So it's a, it's a crystal and we you just drill a hole, just, uh, just punch a bullet through and, and, and then if you, if you design the material right and if you, if you give it a little bit of of, 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 of energy and, and a little bit of time, the, the material itself would, would heal the whole entirely. And so it, it's not, it's not the, this, this robot from the, from the Terminator movie, but we're getting, we're, we're getting close, uh, close to, to, to that. So, it's, uh, so, so this material is based on so-called high entropy alloys. So, Another uh, application uh, is the smart drug uh, delivery. So we all had to have uh, the, those jabs which, uh, uh, with, the, with the vaccine because you, you, you cannot take those uh, mRNA vaccines orally because the, the, the vesicles and mRNA itself, they're not very, they're not very stable in, your, in, in the low pH of your, of, your, of your stomach. So we basically need to create a very smart capsule, which is tiny, tiny capsule, just a few atoms uh, across, which would, uh, which would stay close until uh, it, it gets from your stomach into the bloodstream and only open up, uh, open up in the bloodstream. So unfortunately, I cannot show how it works in, in reality, but on the similar principles, you, you can create some um, robots, robot materials which have some which can do the moves, but, but, but here the functionality is embedded in the material, so it's not, there are no moving parts or anything, so it's just uh, materials with shape memories or, or, or materials with some, or with, some, uh, with some additional functionalities. So same, same, same story for the, uh, for the smart membranes, which I, which, I, which, I showed you, which I showed you before, and, and uh, for, the, for the antiviral coating. So maybe I'll just, uh, for the last five minutes of my, of my talk, just say a few words about, about how those smart material can bring us to the, uh, to the next level in terms of, in terms of sustainability. And uh, in my institute, there are many different streams, streams of work which are, which are directed to, uh, to this. I just, I just chose 
four topics for, uh, for today, just very briefly, uh, just very briefly tell you what, what can be done, but, but in fact, the efforts there are, are, really, are really huge. So one, one story which, which I really like is the biological fuel cell. So this is something really amazing. So there are those, those bacteria which can emit electrons. So uh, what you do, you combine those bacteria with some, uh, uh, with some metal, uh, metal form, and then so those green things are, are bacteria, and then to say this red, the orange thing is, the, is, is graphene form, and then they can emit this electron which is collected by, by, by graphene, and then you can collect this, this electron in, uh, in the, in the uh, in the external circuit, and, and you can use it. Of course, you have to run the second half of, of the reaction as well, but it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not that difficult. So you just feed those bacteria with either CO2 and light or, or sugar if you don't have light, and then, you, and then you basically create electricity. You convert CO2 directly into, into electricity using this, uh, using this, this uh, biological, biological product. So that's how it looks in reality. So that's graphene and then bacteria on top of that. And in principle, it can be, it can be quite, uh, quite efficient. And the beauty is that you start with one bacteria and the conductive polymer, and then it just... You, you basically, you don't need to manufacture your battery. You basically grow your battery. You just give it a bit of sugar from time to time, and then, and then it, just, it just grows and keep producing electricity as, you, uh, uh, as we speak. Now, um, another, another example on the more efficient catalyst, and that's, that's really the big, the big uh, deal and the big problem now, because we, we, unfortunately we produced so much CO2 already that simply turning sustainable is not enough. We have to actually actively pump out CO2 from the, uh, from the, from the atmosphere, and we're, for that we really need very efficient, very efficient catalysts. And uh, uh, so, the, so what many people across the globe work on are those single atom catalysts that you don't, so the catalyst is not this big platinum piece which you connect into the, into the exhaust of your car. It's really single atom act as efficiently as those, as those big, big chunky, chunky pieces. And so we work on those and, we, and again, it's, um, quite a, it's quite an effort. So we, 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 we utilize a lot of AI. You just feed your AI with a lot of, a lot of different uh, type of single atom, uh, single atom catalysts. And then you can, and then you can try to, you can try to uh, to design a very efficient, uh, efficient catalyst. But uh, but this actually has another interesting connection with the with the white paper, with the with the fidget uh, with the fidget world, because uh, those uh, those single atoms they act as a, as single photon emitters. And that's, and that's really important for modern telecommunication, especially quantum, uh, quantum telecommunication. And, 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 and that's the, and that's the, and, and that's the, the question of the, of, of the, of the digital environment when you need the identity, the exact identity of the, of the person with whom you, with whom you are, you are uh, communicating. Because we can make arrays of those, of those single, single photon emitters, and those, all, all those arrays would be unique when, 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 when they are produced. So we can actually put it as a chip, and, it's, and, it's, and, it, and it fits nicely with, uh, uh, on the, on the uh, and it fits nicely uh, on, the, uh, on the silicon photonic chip, so you can, you, you can uh, request the unique identity of the of of your of your counterpart with whom you are you are uh, you, with, with whom you are communicating, and this is done on the on the physical level ra rather than on the on the uh, rather than on the digital level. Then um, the problem of the CO2 extraction, as I said, so we need very efficient membranes. So graphene is a is a good membrane. It doesn't allow anything 
through, or we can actually uh, functionalize it and, and, and we can design it in such a way that, that it would allow only, only, only certain uh, species to, to, go, to, go, to go through it. And now we, we just we combine it with many other materials with like cellulites and morphs and cows and, uh, and so on, and we create those, those, those membranes which can extract uh, hydrogen, so separate hydrogen from CO2 or CO2 from, uh, from, from, from nitrogen, and that's going to be more and more uh, needed in the future because, uh, because uh, uh, unfortunately, as I said, we already, we already uh, produce too much CO2, so we have to actively extract it from the, uh, from the air. And maybe last, uh, last example uh, I wanted to show you that um, sustainability actually goes across across many many different areas. It's not it's not only it's not only energy. So uh, we were uh, uh, synthetic clothes now all the time, which is which is produced from the from the from the uh, petrochemicals. And now what we need to do is is to avoid this and find a replacement for 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 this. And that's, that's one of the work which we're, which we're doing now. So I just, I just wanted to, to show you uh, one of the things. Um, so we, we uh, try to replace those, uh, those uh, uh, artificial fibers which you produce from, get, get from petrochemicals uh, with, the, with the natural fibers. Unfortunately, natural fibers um, and natural polymers, you, uh, you, if, if you try to create, so you can make uh, textiles, of course, from natural fibers. The, the big problem is the, shoe, is, is the shoe industry. So we need, uh, it, it, there is still a challenge how to produce uh, artificial leather. So we, we, we combine those, those, um, those um, uh, uh, polymers which we extract from the uh, from the biological products and we combine it with the with the two dimensional materials to create this this uh, artificial leather so we can make it uh, because there, there are many different materials we can make it black we can make it uh, different colors I should, I should have white uh, here as well so and now it goes into the in, into the shoe production with 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 one of the green sustainable uh, uh, shoe company. Again, we really hope that it can be uh, because we can do it. The the whole process is 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 automatized, so we can register it directly on the blockchain and, and register the proof of work and the, and the proof of, of production and even maybe the proof of wear. So let me just finish here, just stop here and say that uh, unfortunately we have to do a lot of work in the next few years to keep our world sustainable and uh, we are, I really hope that merging the, 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 the two areas of, uh, uh, of advanced materials and sustainable materials with the, with the, with the blockchain solution and, and Web3 solution would be a way forward. And thank you so much for your attention. It's really a great pleasure to be here. Thank you.